The film opened with a song, and we are brought into the East Side High School. We are introduced to the main character of our film, Joe Clark, the principal inside the classroom. Engaging the students in a quiz bee, when a colleague comes knocking and asks Joe to come with him. Outside the classroom, the two bat into an argument almost instantly about them not being included in the meeting of the union of the executive board. We are brought into the meeting room, where Joe didn't waste time but voiced out how they have to have a voice when it comes to this kind of thing. The discussion got heated to the point that one of the members asked him to step outside. Here he is told that in the meeting Joe has been assigned to be moved into school six and that it has already been agreed. Joe left the room in disdain. Twenty years later, the same hallway that Joe walked out of drastically changed with new faces, new students, and a new atmosphere, where a fight breaks even amidst the stream of students, and it is left with nothing but chaos. We are shown different kinds of bad things happening inside the school, without a single trace of the school it once was. One of these is in the cafeteria, where a lot of things that you don't usually see in schools are happening. There's a drug deal happening. A student with a gun was brought in casually. A fight broke out when a student asked for money from another student that ended up one of them being brought to the hospital. In the background, we see a kid being locked up in a locker and is left there alone with no one to help him. Scene shifted to Mayor Don Botman and George having a conversation about the upcoming election and how the school is at the bottom of the ranking and that there's a bill passed about how a school should pass a test on average to keep on operating. Thinking of a solution to the problem, they can only think of one man, Joe. Joe is back in the scene and is visited by the group. They broke the news to Joe that the mayor wanted him to be a new principal in East Side High. They argued a little, but we now see Joe revisiting the school after so long and seeing what the school has now become. He held a meeting where he put all the school officials in place and put plans and steps to start improving the school. The camera now focuses on a theater that has now become like a concert studio. Students were shouting, rapping, and just doing their own things that the teachers seemed to have given up. A few moments later, Joe comes in and witnesses the chaos. He went to the stage, and the list of the names that he asked from the meeting had the hoodlums on it. Now holding the mic, Joe tried to silence the crowd, but to no avail. When he got the attention of the crowd using the school song, he announced that the people on the stage are now all expelled. He gave a speech on how he wants to change the school and warned them that they could be next. Parents of the expelled students came to protest about what happened to their children. He took the time to talk to the parents about how the children needed to change so that they could be helped and raised. There are parents that agree with him, but there are some that frown upon him. The scene ended with a divided crowd, those who accepted and those who didn't accept his views and decisions. Thomas Sams, now the focal point of the camera, is introduced to us properly, the kid in the locker. He talked to Joe about how it wasn't him who did what he was accused of doing and swore that it wasn't him. Joe brought Thomas with him on the rooftop to educate him. Sam wanted to go back to school and he allowed him. The next day at the cafeteria with a megaphone, Joe walks around greeting everyone, beseeching one naughty student to another until he saw Sam's taking food from someone else's plate. Because of this, Joe punished them by singing the school song in front of everyone together with his cousins. A choir being held by a teacher, Mrs. Elliot, is practicing when Joe asks her to teach every student the school song and have a brief chat. They got into an argument a very heated one ending with Mrs. Elliot getting fired. It didn't end there. When he came back to his office, he asked for Mr. Darnell, and they ended up firing words at each other. Mr. Darnell walks out of the room, and it seems that he's become everyone's enemy. The practice exam came, and we now see Joe and the other teachers facilitating the review for the exams. Another day, and Joe is doing his usual routine of being active around the students. We now see Joe asking a teacher about the test scores when two students came running for him saying that some kid is beating up Ray. He came on the scene and apprehended the kid, and as per his instructions, the other gates and doors on the school are chained and locked. On the way back to his office, he noticed Kanisha in a daze, so he came to talk to her, and he learned that she's having problems at home. Finding out, together with Miss Livia's, they went to her home and tried to see what they could do about it. Back at home, Joe and Miss Livia's learned that Kanita's mother didn't mean to make her feel that way. Foster people came to her house and out of love and hope for a better future for her daughter, she thought it was the right thing to do. He offered to help her find a better place to live in a job. The story brings him to a government office where Dr. Napier has shown him news that paints him as a crazy teacher. They fought over the things that they also fought about years ago. 
Back at the school, the fire department is there because they say that the chains on the doors are a violation of the fire code. There was a ruckus outside until Joe went out with a bat in his hand and shooed them all away. Back in the school hallways, we then again see Joe educating one of the students, Ray, who plans to drop out of school. He is trying to stop him, but Ray seems to have made up his mind and dropped out of school nonetheless. Scene shifted to Thomas Sams, this time with his crew. Joe found them and cornered them into the comfort room. This time, he wants them to sing the school song again, warning them that if they can't, they know it's coming for them. To his surprise, not only did the kids know the song, they also sang it with a blending of their voices. He then learned that Mrs. Powers taught them that song. They went to the practice room of the choir, and in there, Joe praised Mrs. Powers for bringing out a new light to the school song, and this put Joe in such a good mood that he greets everyone he passes by in the hallways. But then he received the result of the practice test, and the school failed. At the school gym, teachers are gathered in the gym. They hold a general meeting for remedial classes that they will give the students to be able to pass the exam. He told them how the students failing are their failure as well as the teacher. How they fail to educate them. This inspired the teachers, and we are now shown the extra efforts they are making to improve how the students can learn. And as the days to the exam draw near, we see how the students themselves persevere and thrive on their own because of the changes around them. Now in the gym, we can evidently see how the students are more active and happier than the gloomy place that the school once was. We students are doing sports, bantering and joking around. Joe being the man that he is still active, being around the students while all this happens, and we see Sam's falling on the floor. The camera is now focusing on the parents of the children, protesting against Joe's way in the office of the mayor. Despite Napier's patronizing Joe, the mayor being afraid of the legal actions that could be taken against him, opted to talk with Margaret alone. They talked about how and what they can do to dismiss Joe out of the school, and here a scheme is planned out. We will see it put in motion as we see the mayor and the fire chief talking in the comfort room. Six days before the exam, we are now shown a more vibrant school and more inclined students. They are closer to Joe now and seem to be happier than when the film started. Back at the office, he conducted a meeting much like the first one that he did earlier in the film, but this time, the atmosphere is different. Five days before the exam, we see Clark leaving the school now, and he is stopped in his tracks by Miss Livius, who wants to talk to them about what happened earlier. It turns out that she wants to be transferred somewhere else because she had just enough of Joe's demeanor. By this time, she took the chance to speak her mind and her heart out, which left Joe speechless in the end. Now back in a cleaner theater, once again, Joe speaks in front of the teachers and students, but in a much more organized setting than before. He speaks about the exam that is about to commence in an hour. He encouraged them and sparked their hearts to fuel their will to pass the exam. The meeting ended with the whole congregation singing, Lean on Me. The test commenced, and while all this is happening, Margaret, again in the mayor's office, wants to nail Joe. Meanwhile, Kanisha and her friend Lillian are in the theater because Kanisha is crying. Joe found them there. It turns out Kanisha got pregnant. Joe talked to her and said they should talk to her mother. As they talked, one of the teachers came rushing to him to tell him that the fire chief got inside the school. They got him on tape asking the teachers to remove the chains from the doors. Sam's and the other students saw it and protested together as the police dragged Joe out of the school. Scene shifts to jail where Joe Napier and George are talking of ways to put Joe out of jail. While he is in jail, Margaret is in front of the boards, discussing with them how Joe failed in his professional obligations. Protests sounded in the whole room, and disagreement just grew stronger. Back in jail, we see Joe lying on his cell when a sound can be heard from a distance. Free Mr. Clark, it says. It was his students in protest on their way to the precinct. All this is happening while the meeting is going to dismiss him. Outside the students gathered, a lot of them all uniting for Joe's freedom. Margaret tried to talk sense into them, but they wouldn't hear them out. Joe went out and talked to them. He couldn't calm them, not until Ms. Levius came bringing the result of the minimum basic skill test. The school passed the required grade, and all of them turned to celebrate. With this announcement, Joe has decided that he is not going anywhere and will keep on being their principal. This is how the film ended with Joe being welcomed by his children while singing the song of the school he so wanted them to learn. That's it for today's recap. Give us a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.